right, so we're starting a new chapter, chapter three on exponents in our MathLinks 9 textbook. And exponents uh, is a fairly easy chapter to kind of get your head around because it doesn't involve a whole lot of new skills because you have a little bit of skills already. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about what this is. So if I say this here, two with an exponent of three, I'm going to say this is called a power. Or we can also call it exponential form. So by definition, two with that little small little three in the corner is called a power. And it's also known as exponential form. And the parts are pretty simple. There's two parts. There's an exponent. And there is a base. Now, the relationship between a base and an exponent is quite easy. When you have a power, the exponent, in this case 3, tells you how many times to multiply the base by itself. So base times base times base is what that 3 means. It means take the base and multiply by itself three times. So in this case, since the base is 2, we're going to have 2 by 2 by 2 just like Noah's Ark, 2 by 2 by 2. And this is called repeated multiplication. And when we write powers as repeated multiplication, it helps us to think about what it means when 2 is to the exponent of 3, or when the power of 2 to the exponent of 3, what it means is 2 times 2 times 2. And therefore, the answer for what 2 to the exponent of 3 is, is 8. And we call this one standard form. Or a simplification of the exponent. Okay, So we have some vocabulary here. I'll just take my highlighter out. Again, we have an exponent. We have a base. We have what the base, what the exponential form means, and how it looks like in repeated multiplication. And finally, we have standard form okay so all of these things here are just your basic vocabulary for exponents and pretty straight standard for pretty straightforward any questions on that part so our next uh our first exemplar uh that we can use to kind of guide us through the questions in section two three point one says write four by four by four as a power so we're given repeated multiplication and we're asked to write that as a power so what is four by four by four as a power. Well, since 4 is being used in repeated multiplication, that's going to be my base. And since there are 1, 2, 3 of them, the exponent will be 4 cubed. So we would read that two ways. And in fact, maybe I'll use arrows here instead. Uh, exponents of 2 and exponents of 3 have special uh, readings, but I'll write the standard form for it. We would say 4 to the exponent of Three. That's how I would read that. Four to the exponent of three. Um, incorrectly, but still uh, acceptable to read it is four to the power of three, even though it's technically not right. Uh, a lot of people would say four to the power of three. And with exponents of two and three, if it's an exponent of three, I could read it as four cubed. And that would be an acceptable way to read that as well. So all three ways are ways we could read 4 to the exponent of 3, 4 to the power of 3, and 4 cubed. They are all acceptable ways. If it was an exponent of 2, so if it was 4 times 4, that would be 4 to the exponent of 2. But we could read that as 4 squared as well, right? as well as 4 to the exponent of 2 and 4 to the power of 2, just if it was an exponent of 2. And those are the only two that we really have special terms for, exponents of 2 and exponents of 3. And when you evaluate the par power, sorry for B, this is A, for B, when you evaluate the, the power, if this is given, it says evaluate it, it just means put it in standard form. So 4 times 4 is 16, and 16 times 2 is 32. So 16 times 4 would be doubling 32, which would mean in standard form, 4 cubed is 64. Our next show you know in your notes. 
SYK2, we'll call this one. It says evaluate each power, and it gives us three powers here, A, B, and C. Actually, we're going to do a D as well. I'm just going to give you a D. I'm going to give you uh, – no, I'm not going to give you a D. We'll come to that after. I'll just give you three. So when you're given this and you're asked to evaluate it in your questions you're going to work on, you first write the power, and then you write it in repeated multiplication, and then you write it in standard form. So for A, when I say 6 squared, or 6 to the exponent of 2, or 6 to the power of 2, you're going to write it in repeated multiplication, then in standard form. For B, 3 to the exponent of 4 will be written in repeated multiplication of the base multiplied by itself. So the base multiplied by itself four times. You don't have to write this part. I'm just telling you what it means. So when your exponent is 4, it's base times base times base times base, or 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, since 3 is your base. And we actually had this in our warm-up this morning, didn't we? What's 3 times 3 times 3 times 3? Tilda got it wrong, I think. Didn't you, Tilda? Oh, you didn't? Oh, never mind. I just said Tilda online. I meant, I meant Terry got it wrong. And Terry, in standard form, is 81. Here's how I would have done it. Since the order in which you multiply terms doesn't matter, here's what I would have done. I would have done that, and I would have done that. And then I would have taken those two numbers and multiplied those by themselves. So 3 times 3 is 9, and therefore 9 times 9 is 81. You could go 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 3 is 27, 27 times 3 is 81. That works too. Uh, but sometimes it's easy to chunk a string of multiplication together to get 81 much easier than you would otherwise. And C was also one of our, our warm-up questions. We would say... What are the three ways I could read that? I could read it as 5 to the exponent of 3, 5 to the power of 3, or 5 cubed because it's an exponent of 3. And since 5 times 5 is 25, 25 times 5 is 125. In standard form, uh, 5 cubed is 125. Any questions with those three simple ones? Those are pretty easy. Any idea what we're going to do next here when I flick to the next page? What kind of basis do you think we're going to explore next? We're going to explore negative bases. Okay. So our third example, we can call it SYK3 or show you know 3, says explain how this question and this question are different. So the first thing I want you to put down is this, and this is the most important statement you will get in all of Chapter 3, this statement right here. Negative 5 in brackets to the exponent of 2 does not equal negative 5 to the exponent of 2. What in the name of God? What does this mean? Well, we'll start with why there are brackets. Why are there brackets? Why brackets? Question mark. Why brackets pluralized? We are using brackets around the negative 5 for a purpose. We have it there for a reason. And the reason is the brackets... Define the base. The brackets define the base. So since there are brackets around negative 5, that is our base, which means it's base times base or negative 5 times negative 5. So what would negative 5 squared be? It's actually a positive number, isn't it? It's positive 25, right? When we think about what negative 5 squared or negative 5 to the exponent of 2 or negative 5 to the power of 2 is, since in re repeated multiplication, since we defined it with brackets that the base is negative 5, this is the key right here. Since we defined it as negative 5 base, we need to write it as repeated multiplication. Now, what does that mean if there are no brackets? What does this mean then? What does this mean? Well, this actually means with no brackets, with no brackets around the base, with no brackets, this actually means this negative symbol right here, with no brackets, actually means the opposite of. The mathematical intention 
of that negative symbol, if there are no negative numbers, no brackets around that base, it is not a negative 5 base. We are going to read that as the opposite of 5 squared. Right, when I see this way, I'm going to think of it as the opposite of 5 squared. Or, alternatively, sometimes people think of that negative symbol as being a negative 1 multiplied by 5 squared. Sometimes people think of it as that as well. You can think of it as both ways if you want. I personally, since I've been teaching it for a long time, I find it easier to tell students that if there are no brackets around a negative, what appears to be a negative base, I just think of it as the opposite of it. It always works much better. So when I think of that, I want to think of the opposite of 5 squared. So negative 5 squared will be the opposite of 5 squared. The opposite of 5 squared. The opposite of 5 squared. Which means, since 5 squared is 25, the, what's the opposite of 25? Negative 25. Does that kind of make sense? So mathematically speaking, if I wanted you to say, uh, I have 5 squared dollars, why you would ever say that, whatever. And then uh, I wanted to show the opposite of that. How could I say it mathematically without just saying the opposite of 5 squared? I could just say, no brackets, negative 5 squared means the opposite of 5 squared. So that's what it means. That's the intention. So if I ask you this question, <clears throat> what is that number in standard form? What would that be in standard form? Negative 3 to the exponent of 2. It would be a positive 9, right? Because it would be negative 3 multiplied by itself twice, because the base is defined as negative 3, which means in standard form it's positive 9. What would this be um, here? What does that say? That says the opposite of 3 to the exponent of 4. Since 3 to the exponent of 4 we've already done, because we've already said it's 81, didn't we? Right? Earlier we said it was 81. Then this would be in standard form the opposite of 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. And therefore, it would be negative 81. And look how I wrote it. Take a, take a look how I wrote it. That's kind of an important feature of how I would write it in repeated multiplication. I didn't write negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. I wrote as a negative side outside the brackets times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, meaning the opposite of 3 times 3. Or if you think of it like this here, you could technically write a negative 1 outside the brackets if you wanted to. right? You could technically write a negative 1 out there, and it's going to be the same thing. Because when you multiply something by negative 1, any number, if you multiply any number by negative 1, you get its opposite. right? So we could think of it that way as well. Any questions with that example? There is one last thing I want to show you, and I'm going to show you right now. If you wrote this, this is not the same thing, or sorry, this is not the same thing as this. Okay? And a good example would be if you had, for example, 4 squared plus negative 3 squared plus uh, negative 5 squared. This would be 16 plus positive 9 because negative 3 times negative 3. But look here. The reason why my brackets are actually here, if I didn't have the brackets around it, it would look funny because my addition sign and my negative sign are kind of next to each other with no apparent separation. So when I put this here, that really says plus the opposite of 5 squared is what that really says, plus the opposite of 5 squared. Since 5 squared is 25, it's going to be the opposite of that, which is going to be the negative 25. So once you keep that in mind, sometimes you're going to see that. Just watch to see, are my brackets around the whole power? If they are, it's probably just separating it from th something like an addition or subtraction sign. But if the brackets are around the actual base, that means negative 5 is being used in repeated multiplication.